So it is Friday, April 17th, 2020, and we are in Washington State, and we've been locked down with coronavirus. Um, you know, just making essential trips to the grocery store. Been working from home for about a month now. So, you know, I haven't been out riding. Um, so I figured I would put together you know, what I used on my trip last year, go through some of the gears that I use um, for the purpose of this video. I'm not opening up the sleeping bags or the sleeping pads and inflating them and things like that. We know what a sleeping bag looks like. We know what sleeping pads and, and pillows look like. I wanted to leave it uh, packed up and condensed for this video just to show the size that I'm packing into panniers or, or into the dry bags. So if there are any questions on any of this gear or details on any of these items, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask me a question. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you. This is Johnny from Bigfoot Overland. Uh, just wanted to shoot a video here uh, regarding some of the gear that I carry on the BMW F800 GS Adventure that I have. Um, but before that, I wanted to give just a little bit of a, a rundown on the history of uh, Bigfoot Overland, Mrs. Bigfoot Overland and I. Um, so we started out, you know, camping in tents and enjoying that we wanted to keep getting away and get away from cell signal and get out there and relax um, and we were doing that more and more um, kept accumulating a different stove different sleeping bags you know this grill things like that for camping um, and then uh, as we continued to want to be out more and more doing that we uh, discovered rooftop tents we got a Tapui Grand Sabana rooftop tent years back that was uh, running on top of our you know, 2004 runner. Um, and on that, you know, we, we loved that thing. I, I made a trip to the Lost Coast in California using that rooftop tent. We used it quite a few times here in Washington. Um, and then, you know, that was staying on top of the vehicle through winter through everything never any issues with with that tapui tent um, when when I was young uh, my dad was into motorcycles when we were young kids in California and we had you know a YZ80 when I was fourth fifth grade that kind of stuff um, and a few years back it's got to be 20 17 maybe I made a trip to New Mexico to visit my brother and we went riding in the New Mexico mountains doing a lot of single track on motorcycles and and there I got bit by the motorcycle bug again um, so came back from that trip and bought a, a KTM EXC 450 and it was a 2009 I think um, so you know made a trip down to California with the rooftop tent Carrying that bike on a carry on a hitch carrier on the back of the Forerunner, um, but you know, as far as riding in Washington, the forest roads and things like that, I didn't want to have to go haul the bike every time I wanted to go ride it. Um, so we got a little uh, mini toy hauler and got rid of the rooftop tent, um, and you know, again having to haul the bike where when I want to go ride it's a whole lot of trouble um, but Mrs. Bigfoot Overland loved not sleeping on the ground from the rooftop tent she didn't sleep on the ground anymore so you know the little toy hauler we do enjoy that and like that um, we have tent camped you know since we got the toy haulers well depending on where we're going who we're going with and things like that but I, I sold that KTM and got a, a V-Strom 650 that was outfitted to go off-road and previous owner I know he'd taken it up to to Alaska and things like that from here in the Seattle area so that was in September of 2018 when I got that V strong um, and then as I kept looking at it and looking at what I was going to want to do because we were going to want to make a trip in 2019 down to Utah to do you know about five days parts of a BDR down there in, in June 2019 and I, I wasn't happy with the with the V strong and the setup and some of that so uh, I saw a BMW F800 GS Adventure. It was a 2017 
brand new sitting in a dealership in December of 2018. So they gave me a screaming deal on that and I got more for the V-Strom on a trade-in than I had paid for it. So there, that is where uh, the story of Apollo begins. That's, that's the bike's name. So that was December 2018. Um, and from there, you know, I started figuring out what gear I would need um, for the trip of uh, meeting my brother and, and another guy down in Utah in June of 2019. Um, we do have just regular camping trips where we go out with a group of friends and things like that. We'll tent sometimes, we won't take the bike always and things like that. Um, so we do love to just get out and, and be away from everything and relax without a cell signal. But what I'm going to get to here in this video is uh, the gear, some of the gear that I use specifically on that Utah trip. There's four nights and, and five days riding. Um, and and some of the gear you know for whatever trip I'm going to go on that would be in the panniers and things like that so let's get started with that so the first bit of gear uh, that I'll go through is what I kept in my my dry bag and this is mainly my tent my my shelter setup is what this is um, in that dry bag I also had a little like packing cube that had my clothing for the week, but didn't take that much clothing. We were in, in riding jackets and pants and things like that. Uh, but the dry bag, it's a Seattle Sports uh, Explorer 40 liter. Now I got this thing on a great deal in 2017, I believe on like a lightning deal or something like that. So it was less than $8. I got two of these dry bags back at that time um, and it worked really well and you know I just put it in the back of my seat right down the middle there uh, on the bike on the chip so let's break into this here so in this dry bag like I said I would have a packing cube with my clothing um, that I was going to wear that week you know t-shirts and things like that and um, then a, a pillow, a little backpacking pillow, and this is a Hike Venture small backpacking pillow. This just weighs three ounces, and of course uh, I got this on Amazon. Um, I'll do another video at another point with things opened up if there are any questions, but this gear that uh, we used on this Utah trip, um, it was spot on as far as my uses. Um, I didn't go out to REI and buy top of the line sleeping bags and sleeping pads and things like that. I, I think um, when we were at altitude in Utah there um, and Manti LaSalle National Forest it may have gotten into the low 40s uh, one evening or something like that but uh, I had no trouble with this gear that I'm going to show you here. So. There's the Hike Venture small backpacking pillow, and it weighs you know, three ounces. Here is the sleeping pad. And this is a Trekology UL80 sleep pad. So the weight of this is one pound seven ounces, and you can see there just you know, next to my hand the, the height of it there. And the R value on this says it's two to 2.5. Um, I weigh about 225 pounds. Turning on my side and or anything on this, I didn't have my hip you know, hitting the ground or anything like that. So again, Trekology UL80 sleep pad. Here is the Aegis Max sleeping bag, uh, large size. Um, I, you know, it is a mummy style cut bag, but I, I've got to have room to be able to roll around in there, so I can't be, you know, just stuffed tight like a burrito in there. Um, so it says this is down to about 43 degrees, and it's some kind of down fill on this. Um, but again, no issues on this. Trip to Utah. We're, we're down to 
43 or, or the high 30s in the in the evenings up at altitude there. So the Aegis Max sleeping bag, and I got the large size. Let's see down here. Oh. Here we have the double black diamond down throw. And this is basically just like a, a quilt. Um, the weight on this and the sleeping bag together is two pounds and four ounces. Um, so, you know, there were nights I was not getting into the sleeping bag until well into the early hours of the morning. I'd be laying on top of that, on top of the sleeping bag, and, and then just have this this throw over me um, and you can see here you know, not not too huge as far as the size of those things there uh, the last thing that I was carting around in this dry bag was a marmot catalyst two-person tent the weight of this uh, tent is five pounds twelve ounces um, and that's with the rain fly and everything there together um, I went with a two-person tent. I want to be able to have room to bring gear in the tent and everything like that. Um, and again, set up and, and everything like that. It was very easy. Um, no issues. We didn't have any, any rain during that trip. So I really haven't been in rain with this tent. But, uh, you know, again, for my purposes and, and my budget, um, this gear you know, the sleeping bag, the pad, the pillow, and the and the throw, I all got on Amazon. They're not, you know, name brand REI type stuff, but for my purposes and, and the size and everything like that, they worked very well for me. Um, Marmot Catalyst two-person tent, I would suggest it was easy to set up, and um, I think they were making changes to this model back at the time when I bought this, so I got it for maybe $136 back at that time or something like a, a great deal on it. So there we go. There is the gear that was in my dry bag uh, packed on the motorcycle there. Next we'll get into some of the different gear that goes in the panniers on the bike. Okay, so first let's get into what I keep in the panniers on the bike. Uh, there's some of this stuff that I only carry on, you know, the long trips, the overnight trips such as the tent, the sleeping bags, and things like that. Um, and we'll go, th go through some of that stuff as what I keep in the panniers all the time. If I'm uh, commuting to work, I've got room to throw my, my backpack um, with a laptop and things like that in the panniers still. Uh, so here we go. First thing here, you know, I've got just a like a, a bag I bought off of Amazon um, for, for the tools and they are you know, bike specific pretty much for what I need for Apollo. Um, uh, front axle, we got that there. Uh, 24 millimeter for the rear tire spoon. I'm not the most handy person, don't know that I can change a tire I can do some minor adjustments and things like that but um, a lot of this stuff could be for whoever's with me trying to help me get something done so um, micro start uh, tire inflator with the wires here the connections to the hookers to the bike to get that working um, you can see you have the connection there for for that to, to work and then two USB outlets up here on the top. Um, so the different size wrenches that I need for the for the BMW and the different size Torx bolts that are suggested. Um, some JB Weld, you got that. Um, so yeah. a little jumper cable there. Um, electrical tape, you know, basic stuff um, in, in this kit. Uh, so the weight of these tools that I have in the all the time is four pounds and fifteen ounces. All right, next let's go here to. This is what I call like my survival 
you know, fire kit. Um, and then here, is, again, just a little basic packing cube that you can find on Amazon and places like that. Um, I don't have any fuel in here right now. I've got a little backpacking stove. Um, you know, dryer lint as, as tender to get a fire started. A headlamp in there. Sharpie. A little bivy stays in here. Um, again, this is fire starting uh, materials in, in there. Plastic bags. Steel, fire steel to start fires there. Hand warmers. Um, a little flashlight in there, of course. And then just some little snap lights here. Um, so the weight of this bag is 2 pounds 15 ounces. Um, I do have water purification tablets that I have with me, you know, fire and then a little bivy. So along with that, as far as survival type thing, okay, so that um, is most of the, the basic survival stuff that I have in there. Um, also in the next little organization bag that I have, that. Uh, again another just like packing cube and in here along with the survival side of things is a tarp uh, this is a red camp tarp so this is in there with me you know, for day rides and things like that uh, along with the bivy in case needed so this tarp is one pound eleven ounces of that tarp um, also in this bag right now you know, just some tour tech straps green chili straps and then a, a green chili dinato toe strap um, so this bag with, with the tarp and everything in there you know it's not adding much weight one pound two ounces for just the straps and the and the toe strap and then we've got one pound eleven ounces for the tarp the tarp is again 118 inches by 116 inches so pretty sizable. All right, um, on the first aid side of things, uh, just a little basic SOS, you know, I go first aid kit uh, with your basic stuff for boo-boos and, and things like that, band-aids, uh, you know, antibiotic ointment, um, I've got some rolls of gauze in there, snake bite kit, um, and depending on where we're going and things like that, I do have bear spray that could be in the panniers as well. Um, here is a, a tourniquet, and then in the tourniquet there I do have some cellox, you know, uh, quick clotting type materials in there with that, uh, but, uh, you know, just basic first aid stuff, band-aids, scissors, you know, that kind of stuff is, is what I've got in here, and I do have marked on the pannier top there uh, a first aid sticker, so if someone else is needing to go find first aid stuff, they should help be able to find it a little bit easier. Uh, another thing, uh, you know, a camp chair this is not always with me if it's a day ride if it's going to work and commuting I don't have the camp chair in there uh, this is a sun year bought it off of Amazon it's two pounds two ounces and you guys have all seen these small camp chairs so this is this is basically what you see and this is a knockoff of course um, but I had no issues with this on the trip uh, just another little tool that I have with me in the panniers, a little hunt down axe tool, and so it's got the axe head. Trying to get it out of here. There we go. The axe head. It's got you know, different areas there for different nuts and bolts and things like that. A little pry bar end, bottle or can opener end there. Uh, so you know, that thing stays with me. 
um, just in case needed for any little kind of jobs there. Um, another item that we started using when we were um, using our rooftop tent, um, we went to the Overland Rally in Plain, Washington years ago and uh, saw Overland Solar there. So this is a 28 watt uh, solar panel. And what we would do with this, um, we have a Goal Zero Yeti 150. And we would have that Yeti 150 hooked up in the vehicle charging while we're on the road to wherever we're going to camping. Once we get there and open up the rooftop tent and things like that during the daytime, we'll hang this 28 watt panel and connect it to that Yeti 150. So then in the tent at night, we can be charging phones, we can uh, you know, have lights hooked up and things like that. So the weight of this um, is three pounds, six ounces. Uh, but you can buy different adapters to hook to the Goal Zeros or just hook directly, you know, USB to it and things like that for charging just straight from this panel. So on the trip as well, um, or just in general, most of them, I do have a little, you know, cable organizer and in there I can have different charging cords. I can put batteries in here, things like that. On on the trip to Utah, um, we're filming right now on one of the original, the older Osmo cameras, and I did not take that on the trip to Utah. I, just the time of getting it hooked up and doing everything with that all the time, I didn't want to mess with that, so I just used the the Garmin Verb that is you know mounted on the helmet most of the time, um, and I recharged that in the evenings. Uh, so I'm uh, you know, happy with the quality of that Garmin Verb, but you know, just a little organizer right here. This is what Exact Fit is the brand of this little bag here, and it's got you know little elastic sewn areas in there for keeping the stuff kind of organized. So that um, uh, a cooling towel on some of the days it was close to 100 degrees in Utah, so we wet this down, put it on our neck, and and ride with cooling towels. Uh, and then you know, a microfiber towel and a bacterial. Um, it's pretty good size. Another item that we started using when we were, you know, rooftop tent camping, tent camping, anything like that, we'd have camping stoves with this and things, but weren't always wanting to break out the stove if somebody's just wanting to boil some water for some coffee or something like that. So this jet boil we've had for, for quite a few years and I had this on the trip to Utah with me. Um, you saw in my other little survival pack there uh, that I did have a little like backpacking stove. But this is what I was using to be uh, heating up the water for our dehydrated like mountain house type meals and things like that on the on the Utah trip. So this jet boil is you know, one pound, five ounces, and that's with a can of fuel in there. Uh, so again, no issues. Everybody knows that jet boil name out there, and they've got different sizes that have come out since you know, we first bought this jet boil quite a few years ago. But uh, yeah, no issues with that thing on the trip or anything like that. So that is pretty much what I used on that trip. Uh, you know, I didn't show here uh, what we. We'd stop and, and get water each day, and we also had uh, like a, a, a platypus uh, water bag that I would have water in, and we'd get water and Gatorade and things like that, and mountain house meals. But what we did, we we would at least each day, once each day, we'd have a good meal, whether it's lunch or or dinner or something like that. Um, and we had one planned hotel night there on the trip and that was that Wednesday night there in Moab and then uh, walked around there for a bit that evening. So I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the gear that I use. I will put descriptions of these down there um, in the video and uh, please let me know if you got any comments on anything. Thank you.